where the weight at? Before I ran up in the building, talking way back. I stay late night, dreaming about the payback. All I wanna do is get rich, yeah, 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 yo. I get looking for a lick, hey, yeah, yeah, yo. About to rob him for the shit. Hey, 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 come in, shut the front door. Why are you sweating, God? You're sweating all over. Sit down, chill out, shit. Welcome to Piff on the Blitz, episode three, Return of the Piff. It's like Return of the Jedi, but not. Coming to you Coming live, to you live from your dirty uncle's computer desk. I snuck and infiltrated his shit, snuffed that fat motherfucker out, boom, jacked his spreadsheets, bagged the schematics, and I was out that bitch before you could say Blake Bortles is an elite quarterback. Then I got on a segue, and now I'm actually live, live from my own computer desk where I'm here to give you the nitty gritty for your ditty. Uh, baby, come back. Uh, Any kind of fool can see. I was all off, yeah. but my lineup's good for this week. Uh, I'm Piff, a.k.a. the GOAT. Mr. Everybody on your roster shit themselves this week, and you need a real man like me, Mr. Philip Wavers, Danny Weedhead, Benjamin Potts, and if I was a coach, everybody would run sandhills with midgets in a backpack, and the midgets would slap the shit out of your head consistently. The game's on the line. The game's on the line. You should have played Stafford, but you didn't. You played me instead, Mr. Drew Trees, and I just put up 60 on your bitch-ass squad with little to no effort. Wow, boom, John Madden is really my actual father. I'm convinced of it. Did you guys do good in fantasy this week? Oh, that's great. Good for you. Did you get the points? You got any more? Oh, you got some of those points to spare, man. I need, I need them. Oh, maybe we can work out a trade. Uh, I heard, but I, did, I, I could smell the points from around the block. Oh, goof. Fuck. Jesus Christ, dude. Acting like a fucking point head. I'm a point head. That's what I am. That's a new term, point head. When you're fucking addicted to trying to find points, all you do is scour the internet. Late, late hours, deep into the night. You're a fucking point head, dude. You're a fucking point head. You scumbag. Stop DMing me. Fucking, I'm not gonna fucking trade you fucking Mike Evans for fucking Terrell Pryor, dude. You're fucking trash, dude. Your team sucks in their in their ass and you're an asshole for trying to, to try to do that for that trade dude it's fucking week two don't calm down what the hell what the hell is going on yo i'm jacked up if you couldn't tell i was like yo let me hit week three with a real blit like let me literally blitz you all right get up in your all up in your ear canal and make and make you i want you to second guess listening to this shit i want you to be like yo whoa this is fucking way too much for me in the, this early in the morning. I want I want that. I want you to feel like you're Eli Manning in the pocket. Oh shit, what the fuck is going on? Oh, we've got offensive linemen down here. Down here we have all the offensive linemen, Eli. This is it. And this is the show. Week three. Oh man, uh, didn't do so good in fantasy this week. Uh, our picks were great. Our picks were good. We are 21 and 10 now on the season for game picks, which is great. Our DraftKings lineup, we didn't do so bad. We didn't do so great either. Uh, we're taking strides forward. I think we're making progress. We are like 50 or 60% on it. I mean, uh, Philip Rivers had a good game. And, uh, and Leonard Fournette did good and Mike Evans did good. But Tyreek Hill and Adam Thielen, they didn't pan out for us. And the Pats defense didn't slow the Saints down enough. So you, you might have not won anything. My bad. <laughs> But we got a good lineup this week, I think. We'll fucking find out. Last week, we talked about matchups, and we had uh, Antonio Brown and Xavier Rhodes, and we had Des Bryant and Aqib Tlaib, and those were a little bit of a letdown, to be honest with you. The Antonio Brown and Xavier Rhodes matchup, it, uh, it didn't, it, they did exactly what I, what I said they would do. They switched the game plan up a little bit, threw it to Bryant, got, a, got some points with Juju Smith-Schuster, so they did, they did that. And, you know, and Antonio Brown, late in the game, did beat Rhodes on a crossing pattern, which I said he would do for a big gain. Um, the Steelers just dominated that game pretty much, and uh, I give the win to Antonio Brown. Even though he was held under 100 yards and didn't get a score, he showed that he could definitely beat Rhodes on crossing patterns, and I imagine, you know, if the game plan was a little bit more skewed towards him, that he would have probably gotten even more yards. Uh, and Des Bryant and Aqib Tlaib. So they started the game with putting, I think they put somebody else, was it Roby, on Des Bryant for most of the game, it looked like. And then finally Tlaib was on Des, and yo, I said I was dead ass wrong about last week because I said Des wouldn't get a touchdown and that Talib wasn't gonna let him score and he and he did and and I was like oh shit fuck now I look like a dick but he did he caught the touchdown then Talib came back and got a pick six 
but it wasn't as physical as I would have liked. Um, but I'm, I, I, who do you give the nod to there? In my opinion, it's a draw because they each got a touchdown, which is kind of rare. But, you know, Dallas got dominated. And if you were an owner of Zeke, ugh. And if you don't already know, he got caught quitting on a play. And I think Sports Illustrator Peter King did a whole fucking thing on it, talking about Zeke's a quitter. And here's my whole thing with that. So you got this case hanging over your head. It's a real bad rap. A lot of people think you beat women. And this is the thing. The only chance we... I don't know Zeke personally. You, you probably don't. The only way we get to, get to know a player is when we see him on game day. So that's when we see the player, you know? We get to see how he behaves. So you got this really bad case, and for you to quit on a play is not a good look because people are already turning on you. Some fans have already turned on you. It's hard to support an athlete that is being accused of beating women or beating anyone. But the only time we get a chance to get to know who you are, really, is when we see you play. So you did a bunch of stupid shit. Uh, you were touching boobies, you were playing on boats, you were visiting weed shops, you were, you know, going back to college, you were doing coke, hanging out in saunas, choosing to be around dumb people. You know, after the big Ohio State-Michigan State game, you didn't, it, things didn't go your way. So you declared for the draft afterwards and blamed coaches, said you didn't get the ball enough. Oh, you're in college, okay, okay. Maybe it's a little immature, but you're a kid. But you put all those things together with the fact that you just showed this week when things don't go your way, you're going to pout and you're going to quit. And that's character. So where am I, what am I getting at? What I'm getting at is when I see that on the field, the type of character that you displayed, and I piece that together with all of the boneheaded shit that you do, I tend to start wondering as a fan, is this guy a fucking liar? Does this guy have poor character? Should I be supporting him? Dude, not a good look. Okay, not a good look. Because common sense tells me if you do that type, if you're on the sidelines with a dip the size of a softball in your lower lip, and if things don't go your way, you pout, you quit on plays, and I combine that with all the other boneheaded shit that you've done, when it comes to a case being presented in court where you're being accused of certain things, ooh, let's put it this way. If I filled up, if I have two columns, a positive and a negative column, and we're not talking talent here, we're talking like as a person, the negative column is like getting full, bud. It's getting all the way up there. So my common sense leads me to think that maybe you're just fucking lying about shit. And maybe you are just not that great of a person. I already kind of don't support you as a person. Only a player right now. But dude, get it together. You can't quit. Especially when my fantasy point points are on the line. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all about fantasy. And that's the deal. What's the deal with fucking players? I don't care about your fantasy. We fucking pay your salary. If you don't care about it, don't fucking speak on it. Because that's all we do. You think we watch you because we're fucking obsessed with your calves and we want to see you run routes? Or you think you think we're dedicated to watching you run routes? We want to see you... No, dude, fucking it's all about fantasy, dude. When you retire from the league and somebody else takes your spot, we won't give a shit about you. We'll care about the next guy who's getting our points. That's the way that that's the way it works, man. Sorry. It's a business. You get paid what you get paid, which is pretty good compensation, I'd say, for playing what you play. It's like okay, so fantasy's big now and people are going to people are yelling at you. Well, first of all, okay, social media plays a part in that because before, like in the 90s, maybe maybe not a lot of people played fantasy. But they still called up them radio shows and fucking gave all the players shit. But the players weren't, you know, really connected with it. They didn't have to hear it as much, maybe. Now they're social media, so they hear it, and they get added, and it goes right to them. And they say it's fantasy. Oh, I don't, I'm tired of you guys complaining about fantasy. Look, if fantasy didn't exist, you, don't, you think people wouldn't still at you for your poor performance if they're a fan of the team? You act like, you act like that wouldn't happen. If, fantasy didn't, if people didn't play fantasy, that wouldn't happen. Come on. Get, dude, this is the gig, dude. You're in the fucking, you're in the big show, right? Bright lights. You're going to get critiqued. And I'm going to put a fantasy team together. And like I said, when you're gone, the next guy comes in, whoever's getting me the points, uh, uh, whoever's got the points, man. Nobody gives a shit who, who the points come from. 
you got guys picking picking people pick up guys they've never heard of before as long as they're getting the points dude fucking Higgins from the Browns nobody's fucking he's a practice squad he's caught like one or two passes in his whole career but he got 17 points last week man go scoop him up so we don't see we don't give a shit okay look at Adrian Peterson I'm sure he's a free agent right now great player one of the best running backs of all time right but you know you don't perform we don't care right that's the way it is <laughs> for me it's two things like I have a team that I really support and I watch the players and I see how they train and I admire that and I and I support my team as a fan and so as a fan I'm still fucking really critical of things that happen I'm still cussing at the coaches on on play calls and then I have fantasy where I get to bitch at even more players that are that aren't on my team so how fun and you know if I work all week and you work all week and we put them hours in just to get that paycheck to feed our family to get set up and we need one day out of the week <clears throat> to let it out bitch at you hey we don't make millions like you do bud so guess where we're shooting at so get over it and most of you people complaining about fan uh, stop stop at me with the fantasy shit I ain't fucking about that guess what you fucking probably aren't even starting anyway so chill on it blunt I don't like that. I don't like when you tweet. Don't affect my fantasy future. Don't try to screw the game. Don't get the fucking... You got enough. You guys got enough shit to worry about on fantasy related. Okay? Concentrate on your health and getting me the points. Right? All right. So week two is in the books. And uh, the, the, the thing I like about this show is that it's called Piff on the Blitz. Right? Which is cool because, you know, we could do things that are like like a blitz right maybe i don't we haven't done it quite yet maybe the first show was pretty quick so maybe that was kind of like a blitz so i decided yo if we're going to be called piff on the blitz let's blitz them let's blitz them so i i don't know i put something new together this week and i'm going to try it out okay it's like a 90 second maybe 60 to 90 second blitz of information of things you need to know from week two so let's get at it i'll roll right through it boom give you everything you need to know for week two then we'll move into week three and uh, do some game picks. And uh, the matchup thing's cool. I did it last week. There were some good matchups last week. I, I don't know. Well, you guys tell me if it's worth keeping or not. Should we keep focusing in on individual player one-on-one -on -one matchups? You know? Should we do that? I got a couple this week. We'll, we'll, we'll go over them. And if you guys aren't feeling it, let me know. Shoot me them comments. At Monster Piff. At Rowdy Piff Pod. Okay? Shoot us the questions. But we'll do that. We'll talk about, uh, yo, tight ends got destroyed this week. Holy shit. Greg Olson, gone. Tyler Eifert, injuries all over, ailing. Gronk hurt his groin. Reed's a chest issue. Graham's knee, toe, ankle, who knows. Dude hasn't been healthy since, like, 2014, 15. I don't know. But we'll get into that. So let's, let's start off with the blitz. What happened in week two? You ready? I'm going to load the box up. Are you ready? I'm loading the box up. All right, here's what we have. Teams that start 0-2, they have a 12% chance of getting in the playoffs. Not very good. So sorry, Bengals, Bears, Giants, Saints, Colts, Browns, Jets, Chargers, Niners, but your odds are kind of uh, low now. On the other hand, if you went 2-0, it doesn't really help you that much because since 2002, a full 60% of the playoff teams were either 1-1 or 0-2. So don't celebrate too hard if you're the Ravens, Panthers, Lions, Steelers, Chiefs, Broncos, Falcons, Raiders. Tom Brady's winning calls again with the refs. Uh, all their attention's on Zeke, so Brady's on good terms. Joe Thomas' Ironman streak continues. He had 162 consecutive games after this week. That's over 10,000 consecutive snaps. Greg Olson's down for the count. He's out for a long time. Hurricane Irma couldn't slow down Mike Evans and the Bucks. They came in and won their first week. John Fox doesn't have very much interest in playing Mitch Trubisky anymore. Mike Glennon's got that cannon. You know, don't blame him, right? Well, Mike Zimmer, what are you doing? You're trying to fake punt from your own 36. Uh, you're losing your mind. Uh, luckily, your defense held Steelers to a field goal because if they didn't, it would have been really bad. Bengals became the first team since 1939 to open with two home games and failed to score a touchdown in either of them. Offensive coordinator's fired now. We'll see if uh, Marvin Lewis somehow magically is keeping his job. I don't know how. Steelers receiver Juju Smith-Schuster got his first career touchdown. Deshaun Kaiser was forced out of the game with the migraine for the Browns. Uh, Falcons offense uh, seems like it's hitting its strides with their new offensive coordinator. The Ravens defense has snagged eight interceptions this season from six different players. Wow, incredible. 
Baltimore needs his defense, though, because they lost Marshall Yonda. He suffered an ankle injury, and it's going to end his season. Bruce Arians was asked at halftime in Indianapolis why Arizona's offense wasn't clicking. His response was short and to the point, quarterback. Maybe Palmer's done, right? No shit, he's done. He's like fucking ancient. He can't do anything anymore. Phil Dawson's 30-yard field goal for Arizona in overtime was the 14th game winning of his career, and uh, so he won. Beat the Colts. Uh, don't blame Bills rookie Zay Jones, a second-round pick out of East Carolina, for being unable to haul in a probable game-winning touchdown at Carolina because he dove eh, to get his fingertips on it. Uh, almost got it. Uh, Could have brought it in. Taylor just needs to make better throws in Buffalo. Taylor off to a bad start. Okay, Carolina's 2-0. and Good news. Bad news. Cam Newton missed a lot of practice time. His shoulder's not looking good. He, he He's still trying to find a rhythm. He can't. Saints are 0-2 for the fourth straight season. Kareem Hunt Awful. is blowing everyone else away in the Rookie of the Year race. Uh, most of Hunt's production, though, only came on a 53-yard burst, but he's the third player in NFL history to have touchdown runs of more than 50 yards in each of his first two games. That record was set and has been held since 1955. Wow. Leonard Fournette, on the other hand, didn't have as much luck backing up the 100-yard rushing effort as he uh, only finished with 40 yards. He didn't have a bad fantasy score, though. Brissett was 8-for-8 eight eight when targeting Jack Doyle. Looks like he's got some chemistry there. Philip Dorsett made his impact finally in New England. Atlanta opened the roof at its $1.5 billion dollar Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Yo, I heard you can go in there with 20 bucks and feed like 12 people. Awesome. Things weren't quite as exciting at the 27,000 seat Stub Hub Center, the temporary soccer venue for the Chargers, where apparently Miami felt like it was a home game and there was mostly Dolphin fans. How the fuck are there so many Dolphin fans in California? I don't know. Aaron Donald made his return for the Rams. Uh... Bill Belichick said there was communication issues with their headsets at the Superdome. Oh, wow. How ironic. It's about fucking time, everybody said. Chargers passer Melvin Ingram was asked this week what kind of problems uh, Jay Cutler presents. His answer was none. <laughs> Jay Cutler turned up and won 19-17. Uh, you know, so so the Rams, uh, Todd Gurley, he, he can't run, so might as well throw him the ball, right? Guess so. I don't know. Antonio Gates caught his 112th career touchdown pass, and uh, Gates is now six overall in touchdown receptions passing. Tony Gonzalez. Ah, interesting. Is Cordell Patterson a running back now? Maybe part-time at least. Maybe they're taking a page out of the Ty Montgomery book because he got a 43-yard touchdown run against the Jets. Could be something to pay attention to going forward. <clears throat> Gerald Everett, the Rams' second-round pick out of South Alabama, looked like a potential star. 95 yards, three catches, and uh, he's he's got a good chemistry with Goff, it looks like. Crabtree, this was his second three-touchdown day of his career. Dude, the dude blows it up, dude. Why didn't I draft him? Okay, rookie young Hoku ain't cool no more. He's missing shit all over the place. And that's week two. That's the blitz. Did I sack you? No, you, you didn't. That was like three minutes. That was like three minutes. Dude, we really have to work on our blitz. We're not getting after anybody. We're, uh, we're gonna have to speed that up a little bit. All right, so week three, um, like I said, we're 21 and 10 in game picks. We'll get to the game picks here in a minute. Uh, what I want to do first is break down a couple interesting matchups that are happening in week three. Um, and the first one being uh, Tom Brady versus the Texans defense. Now, this is interesting because last year in the playoffs when the Pats and the Texans played, I felt like the Texans could have beat the, 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 the Patriots. They could have beat the Patriots had they have had a quarterback that could throw, right? And I said that in the first episode. And now they meet again. But this time, J.J. Watt's going to be playing. So this is interesting to me because, one, you know, every game's crucial for the Texans. Every game's crucial for every team. But for the Texans in their division, you know, they really, you know, this would be a big, huge win for them. Uh, the Patriots seem to have a lot of weapons uh, issues. They can't, uh, there's some injuries. You know, Brady doesn't have as many weapons to throw to. So they're almost coming in with a little bit of a disadvantage, right? They do have a good running back, but... The Texans' defense is their strong point. Brady, though, is 5-1 and one all time against the Texans with a ratio, with the touchdown-interception ratio of 12-4, to four. okay? Uh, last year in the playoffs, he threw for 287 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. They sacked him a couple times, um, and that was without J.J. Watt. So most recently, Brady had a little bit of trouble with the Texans' defense. So I key in on this matchup, and it's the one to watch because with Watt on the field, is that a game changer? Is he a game changer? Is he finally going to be worth the fucking money that they pay him? Because this is their plan all along. We got Clowney, we've got Watt, we've got a strong defense. This is how we're going to beat, you know, really good offenses. And there's a lot of factors. Gronk's got a groin injury. We don't know if uh, Amendola's for sure going to play. Um, and then over on the Texans side, you know, they got a rookie quarterback and Brian Cushing is out. 
for a while. So it, it'll be interesting. The dynamics are there, right? The system, the systems are in place and they're ready to go. So watch that game. Uh, pay attention to Brady and see, and it also I think playing a strong defense with Watt chasing after you, we're gonna we're gonna see Brady's age a little bit better. Maybe he maybe he has another down week. Um, like I said, mo- most recently he's he's you know didn't do amazing against them, uh, but he's five and one all time. So there, I repeat myself. All right, Zeke versus the Cardinals. This is the second matchup I have with. Uh, if you want to do a side quest, if you want to do a side quest, here's some cliff notes. Des Bryant in. Uh, Patrick Peterson. That's another good matchup. Because, dude, and Dez has faced off against Jenkins, Tlaib, and now Peterson. Tough road. Tough road. Tough start. But Zeke and the Cardinals, and this is, dude, when, whenever Zeke gets on primetime, we saw when he played the, uh, when he played the um, Bears on primetime, when he played the Bucks, I mean, he had big games. Uh, he's a primetime guy, and this is his chance to redeem himself and his Really terrible performance last week. I mean, nine carries, eight yards is what what he had last week. But he's under the big bright lights, and it's prime time, and he he has a lot to prove. So we know he shows out when the lights are on. Um, he's had 150 yard games on Monday nights, so uh, I I expect a big game from him. Cardinals are looking. I think they're sitting tenth in run D. So I mean, that's formidable, right? Uh, Hassan Reddick is the new blood over there on the defense. He's a quick linebacker. We'll see how he, he fares against Dallas. And then Carlos Dansby is a tackle machine. Um, they've got Jones. They've got Peterson in, in the Honey Badger. So it'll be a good matchup. It's going to be a good Monday night game. Um, I'm looking at the offensive line for Arizona, and I'm wondering if, if they can hold. Uh, they shouldn't have a. They shouldn't really have too many issues with Dallas's D. That is a really vulnerable, young, fresh. Uh, pass defense. So Palmer has the potential to get big points. Larry Fitzgerald could go off. You know, J.J. Nelson could go off. Um, the Cardinals lost, you know, David Johnson. So, you know, coming into this before the season, it would have been even better. But now without David Johnson, we'll see We'll see what goes down. And then the Dez Peterson, like I said, Dez, tough roads, man, tough trekking. We'll see if he can uh, do He's But it's a good setup for the beginning of the year. You face, like, the best corners, you know, and then you still got Norman twice that you got to play against. Um, You know, so you you face all your tough guys. Maybe that gets you even more prepared for the long road. I don't know. We'll see. But I pay attention. Hopefully we get a good matchup out of Dez and Peterson. I don't really think that Dez is going to get targeted as quite as much as he's been targeted the last couple weeks. The the chemistry just isn't there, and I think this is an important game for Dallas to just get a win in. So I, I see the game plan really leading heavily on Zeke heavily on maybe like Beasley or T. Will, um, you know, and, and Des Bryant will maybe be an afterthought. But if they decide to go game plan with Des Bryant and he, he goes off, I'll just look like a dick again. No big deal. So those are the two matchups I keyed in on this week. Brady versus the Texans defense, Zeke versus the Cardinals on Monday night. I feel like that's going to be fireworks. And uh, if you want to do a side quest, <laughs> Peterson and Des will pay attention to those three matchups. So that's what I keyed in on, right? And if you guys are feeling the matchup thing, let me know. If you're not, if you're not feeling it, tell me to get rid of it, and I'll do it. I'll scratch it. We'll move. We'll move forward. All right, because I'm not committed to anything on this show, ever. I don't trust anything. I don't trust any of the segments I do. I don't trust any of the information I'm giving. I'm in a dark room. There's fucking black lights. I'm trying to. I'm trying. I got strings across the wall with pictures of Philip Rivers and uh, and and the schematics of the the New York Giants defense. I fucking. I'm a loon. I'm a. Uh, uh, I can meet you at Walmart at 7 if you've got those points at tight end. Fuck, dude. Jesus. I'm dude. good for it. I'm good for it, man. Tyler Higby's going off this week. Just just go through with the trade, man. Just fucking, we'll go through with the trade and it'll be done. It'll be done. Fucking, mad. it's madness. Fantasy madness in week two already. But I'm one and one, so whatever. All right, so let's, okay, so we talked about the matchups, right? Okay, cool. You probably want to line up. You want, oh, I fucked you on the survivor pick last week because I didn't, I didn't give you one. Like I said, I was going to be doing every week, so we'll do that. We'll pick a survivor team if you're playing a survivor pool. Tell your, oh, damn. Dude, I'm back. Sorry about that. I cut out. I was just, I was literally talking, and then it was just, bzzz, bing, like, super loud. I had to throw the fucking headphones down. I was like, ah, I feel like the NFL might be listening. I feel like we're getting cut out. I feel like they don't like the information I'm giving you. Maybe Roger Goodell's up to fucking trying to get me. Maybe this whole show's going to start taking a freaking really weird turn. Maybe episode five, I'll completely have lost my shit, and this whole show will just be fucking paranoia. 
Let's 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 hope I can pull it together. Let's hope the NFL stops fucking with me. Or maybe it's not the NFL. Maybe it's just maybe maybe my drivers are losing their shit. I don't know. Maybe the software is about to crash. We'll find out. Um, week three. Okay, game picks. We're twenty-one and ten, and we're gonna head into the week. Um, let's talk about it, right? Baltimore and Jacksonville. They're gonna go over to the London where the Fatberg is. <laughs> 14 to 10, I'm going to give the game to Baltimore. I think that uh, Jacksonville will get after Flacco. I don't feel like Flacco's going to have a huge throwing day, but the way their running game has worked lately, I feel like uh, they can get the win there. So Baltimore 14, Jacksonville 10. Atlanta and Detroit, this should be a good matchup. I'm going to give it to Atlanta, though, 31 to 23. In this game, I just feel like uh, I feel like a good matchup is almost a matchup I wanted to focus in on was uh, Julio Jones and, and Slay. Because Slay is a top corner. He's been shutting people down for a while, and he's pretty underrated. So pay attention to that. But uh, I'm going to give Atlanta the win, 31-23. to Tennessee and Seattle. This should be a showdown, and my, my pick is Tennessee. It's kind of an upset pick. I'm going to give him 23. I'm going to give Seattle 17. That offensive line in the running game for Seattle is just so bad. They're really making me question picking them for a Super Bowl pick. Like, what? Dude, you're off to Russell Wilson. He knew ahead of time that he was going to have to be on the run. That's why he lost the weight. I, I said that in the first show. But Tennessee 23, uh, Seattle 17, they're just going to pound the rock. They're just going to pound the rock. And I think it's going to be, maybe it's low, more low scoring than that. Who fucking cares? Okay, Tennessee up 23, 17. Boom, Kansas City and L.A. I think L.A. is going to start 0-3. I think, you know, Phillip Rivers is going to do what he always does. There's going to be like a minute or two left. He's going to try to come back. It's just not going to work. Kansas City's going to win 21-20. to Alex Smith. Speaking of uh, some picks, let's let, let me let me take a second to stop here and tell you that Alex Smith has the most deep passing yards in the league right now. Okay, he hasn't been any more aggressive this season. Uh, you know, with 14 other quarterbacks having as many or more deep pass attempts, but he's been extremely accurate on all of those that he's attempted, and uh, the Chiefs have schemed really well. So Smith has a deep ball now. Whoa, who would have thought? So moving forward, okay, Bengals and Packers. We're gonna give the Packers the win, 31 to 10 over the Bengals. I don't, I don't even know if the Bengals can score, so I, giving them 10 might be too much. The Packers are at home as well. Uh, Tyler Eifert might play, might not. I don't know. Packers 31, Bengals 10. Rams Niners Thursday night matchup. I'm gonna give this game to the Rams, 24 to 14. I feel like Cooper Cup's gonna show up, pour me up, spell his name right, throw some respect on it. If you act like you fucking know, you better spell his name right. 24-14, Rams over the Niners. Broncos, Bills. That sounds like some 90s shit. Broncos, 30, Bills, 10. Taylor really needs to get accurate. I mean, it's not like he has a ton of weapons. Jordan Matthews was dropping the ball all over the place last year, and uh, so that's who they brought on the team. I, I thought, okay, I thought they would be better with Matthews, but it just hasn't worked out so far. Broncos, 30. Bills 10, we'll see if Taylor can survive Von Miller. Panthers and Saints, I am going with an upset pick here. I feel like the Panthers are going to go 2-1 after this week. I feel like the Saints at home in the Superdome with Drew Brees messing with the communications is going to be enough for them to win 21-20. to uh, You know, so, boom, that's an upset pick. Browns, Colts, what a toilet bowl. But I'm going to give the game to the Colts, 27, Browns 23. Browns just lost Coleman. That sucks. They got Higgins. We'll see how he does. But I think Brissett's going to find his zone at home and uh, connect with Jack Doyle and 27-23 Colts. Steelers, Bears, Steelers 27, Bears 12. I mean, come on. What, Le'Veon Bell's going to have probably a big day. I, I, I just see that happening. I see Antonio Brown getting back into the mix. Steelers, big win over the over the Bears. All right, Pat, Pats and Texans. I will give this win to the Pats, 25-10. Uh, to 10. Over the Texans uh, with a rookie quarterback, I find I didn't pick him last week and he proved me wrong. But I'm gonna not pick him again this week and see what he can do now. Uh, so yeah, Patriots get the win there against the Texans. Dolphins and Jets. I'm gonna give the win to the Dolphins, 23, Jets 17. I feel like the J train will be on the tracks and moving and, and being a complete locomotive. <clears throat> uh, so Dolphins 23, Jets 17. Bucks Vikings. Uh, whew, this was a tough one. I'm gonna give it to the Vikings at home. 21-19, and that's probably a mistake, but we'll stick with it. Vikings defense with Rhodes is probably good enough to hold down Evans somewhat, and uh, maybe Cook, you know, in those short passing plays breaks out for a big, big one. And at home, it's pretty loud, and we'll see how Winston does. I feel like he's going to throw a pick that's going to change the game, and I'll give the win to the Vikings 21-19. Eagles-Giants, can the Giants get it together? 
They're they're fucking terrible. The New York Post has them at what are what is wrong with the Giants? Said the New York Post, uh, and then the fucking earthquake that killed 134 people is just like you know a small title under that. So people really care about the Giants so much so that they could care they don't care that much about you know earthquakes. Uh, where what am I? What are you getting at? Are you trying to get political? Are you trying to fucking be political? Is there an agenda? No. The Eagles win this game 27 to 17, and uh, Carson Wentz is going to go off. And the Eagles need to find a little bit of running game with Blunt. I think Blunt gets a red zone touchdown. He's back. And to stay off fucking Twitter, you're an asshole about it. And you're you're so mad at that that when you don't get points that fantasy people come after you. Fuck I should I should pick the Giants just for all your bullshit, right? Odell Beckham's probably gonna propose to something uh that is not a human and is gonna be like a fucking a sideline marker. Who knows? <clears throat> Raiders skins 31 to 21. Raiders on a Sunday night matchup that I'm kind of looking forward to because I need Terrell Pryor to go off. I don't think he will. Connolly did really good in his uh, first game with the Raiders last week. So, you know, he's looking good. Was it his first game? I don't know. I think it was. If it wasn't, fuck, sue me. Um, and then the Cardinals and the Cowboys on Monday night. Good primetime matchup, maybe, if the Cardinals show up. I think Dallas will, and that's why I'm going to give them the win, 35-20. to 20. And, you know, that pass defense is so vulnerable. It's so terrible. It's so bad. I, dude, you can, I can only defend something so much. But I, when I started the first episode, I told you the Cowboys were, without Zeke, they were a struggling team. With Zeke, I think they make the playoffs. But I told you the pass defense was so bad that Grandma could throw 300 yards on it. And look what fucking Trevor Simeon did last week. Four touchdowns. It was just like... And they're playing mostly zone. So I think it's time for Marinelli to let him go into man. Let, the, let, these, let these young kids ball. Let them play a little man. Because if you go into the zone on Carson Palmer and Fitzgerald, they will eat you alive. And Nelson will go over the top. And they will eat you alive. Even with a bad... They don't have to worry too much about protection because Dallas's D-line isn't, you know isn't anything to write home about so but i don't know i picked the cowboys 35 to 20 uh the scores don't mean shit it's mostly about the picks i throw some numbers on it okay 21 to 21 and 10 is our record we're way over 500 we're doing belichick numbers so hopefully after next week we you know are still looking really really good we'll see all right, so those are the week three picks. I gave you some matchups to pay attention to. Now it's time for the, you know, the, the fantasy lineup. Uh, if you're doing the DraftKings, the FanDuel, the one-week fantasy, whatever. Here's the lineup I put together for you this week. I'm not, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you right now. I'm not very confident in it. I'm not very confident in it. It was tough. And, um, you know, do what you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. And maybe the fact that I'm not confident in it will do better. Who knows? Because the last couple of weeks I acted as if we were going to win fucking billion dollars and it, it wasn't that good. So maybe this week it, that'll, I feel like it's not that good, so maybe it'll be better. Quarterback, I have Derek Carr against Washington. And just, I guess, where the price was and just on Sunday night, I just I feel like with Crabtree, you know, that Carr is going to have a good game. I think he's going to get you enough points. At running back, it's like if Hunt is going off every week, we'd be stupid to not play him. So fuck it. We'll see if it ends or if it continues. We're going to go with Hunt at running back. Chris Thompson, same deal. If Chris Thompson's just going to go off like he is, well, let's just ride it until he stops. And uh, so, and this is, wow, that's two people in a, sun, in a Sunday night game already. And then uh, at wide receiver, I feel like with Olsen down, Benjamin will finally see the pay dirt. And I'm going to put Benjamin in as a wide receiver. And I don't know why I keep doing that. I'm, like, obsessed with playing Benjamin because it's like, dude, he's, like, 6'7". He should be catching everything thrown his way in the red zone. But, you know, Cam's accuracy is all over the place. So I'll still go with him. I'll go with him because the price is right. Deshaun Jackson, I'm going to pick him because I know the Vikings like to bite. I know they bite. And I know they're going to have to pay attention to Cook. And I think Deshaun Jackson – or, wait, what? Pay attention to Cook. No, I think the Vikings are going to have to pay attention to – Mike Evans a lot, and so Deshaun Jackson will go over the top, and I think he'll have a big day. We'll put him in. Adam Thielen, he was up, then he was down. I think he's up this week. I'll put him in the third wide receiver spot versus the Bucks. Um, I think, yeah, the Bucks play some zone. Uh, he'll be able to fit into those those comfort zones, those, those spots that are going to get him the points. It's all about the points. Zach Ertz will be my tight end. Uh, he's been getting a ton of targets. I like his production. We'll put him in a tight end. And then for the flex spot, I, I picked Gillisley for New England because I, I feel like they're going to run a little bit more with the weapons, you know, that they're, they're having some injury issues. Maybe they'll, 
Gilsley will probably find pay dirt. And then for defense, I picked the Eagles because, I mean, if you saw the offensive line for the Giants last week, you know the Eagles isn't, you know, for the price, eh, it's a good pick, you know. Eli's definitely going to get sacked. They're definitely going to cause and create chaos. So that's the daily, weekly fantasy lineup. Boom, daily. It's definitely weekly. All right. So there you have it. There you have it, folks. We got to duck out this bitch, dude. We got to duck out this bitch. I might fucking... This episode, I had the headset go haywire. Uh, you do that fucking dirty uncle is probably looking for all of his spreadsheets, and I've got them. So we got to duck out this bitch real quick. But we'll be back next week for episode four. Oh, we'll episode be four already? Wow, we're having the time of our lives out on, on, uh, on this podcast today. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in and checking us out. Hopefully you do better in fantasy than I do, and you get some points. And, you know, if, if fucking NFL players are talking shit about us fantasy owners, you at them. Just at their asses, okay? Let them know what it is. Uh, tell, let, tell them what I said. Tell them I, tell them I sent you. You can get at me at Monster Piff. You can get at me at Rowdy Piff Pod on Twitter, at Rowdy Piff Pod, okay? Check out Rowdy and the Piff on Mondays, okay? We have a show there. I have a show here, Piff on the Blitz. But Rowdy and the Piff, you can get at us over on that end, at Rowdy and the Piff Pod, okay? And we're on YouTube, and we're on iTunes, and you can download. But listen, if, you down, if you're downloading the shows, Piff on the Blitz or Rowdy and the Piff, if you're downloading any of those shows, you need to review it. You need to rate it, okay? Get in there. Give us five stars. Tell us what, tell us what we're doing, how, what we're doing well. Tell us what we're not doing well. Tell us what I'll... Tell, t- tell, tell me something. I know you're out there on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment. Put the, turn the notifications on so you know, so I can wake you up at 2 in the morning when I drop new shit. It's new art, new waves, okay? So thanks for tuning in. Get at us. Send us your fantasy questions. Send us sports questions. Send us questions about anything you want. Oh, you want more information about Fatberg? Did you check out the episode, Fatberg episode that Rowdy and the Piff did? If you didn't, do it. Check it now, okay? Good luck this week. But listen, I'm not going to come back. I will not come back on the show if you can't uh, rate and review it. All right? If you don't give me the activity I need, if you don't give me the feedback I need, then what the fuck am I doing a show for? Am I just talking to myself? I'm already talking to myself. I I feel like this is going to self-destruct rather quickly. So please, uh, please help me survive and fucking like and share and subscribe and do all of it. Okay? Because I love you. And I need and I need your atten- uh, your attention and support. Okay, that's enough. Peace. I'm out. Oh shit! Oh shit! Survivor, survivor pick. Yeah, you need a survivor pick. Uh, fuck. So maybe last week we picked the Raiders. Maybe you don't have the Raiders pick. Maybe this week you go with the la uh, la 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 la. What am I looking? at? I'm looking at week two. Um, maybe this week you go with the Broncos. Okay, even then. And, and that's a good pick. And if you don't feel safe about that, if you're like, oh, I already picked the Broncos, um, which would be weird if you already picked the Broncos, then go with the Steelers. I already picked the Steelers. Oh, okay, so then go with the fucking Raiders. I don't know, but they're survivor pool picks. Hope you do good. Tell your boss I said what's up. All right, I'm really out this time. Peace.